Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be making this beautiful gemstone and crystal necklace. As you can see, it has a very attractive leaf pendant with little dangles hanging in the front. One of the unique features about this necklace is that it has a toggle clasp in the front. And as you can see, it has a variety of different beaded components. And what inspired this necklace was a bracelet that I made about a week ago. If you haven't seen that tutorial, I'll link it down below. But the bracelet matches this necklace perfectly. So if you made that bracelet, then you're going to want to make this matching necklace. And we'll be using the beads that came in Bargain Bead Box for the month of October. Don't forget that I'm going to list all the materials down in the description section of this video, along with the tools that I'm going to be using, and some timestamps as well, in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And if you like my content, please think about subscribing to my channel. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And here we have Bargain Bee Box for the month of October. And yes, guys, it's a bag. It usually comes in an organza bag. It must have come in a box at one time. But ever since I've been receiving Bargain Bee Box, it's always come in a bag that I'm aware of. Now, I know there's already been a lot of unbagging videos, and I'm a little bit late in the game, so I'm not going to go through all of the items. But anyway, the name of this collection is Falling Leaves. And since we're still in fall and Thanksgiving is right around the corner, I thought I'd make a quick tutorial today. But before we start, let's take a quick look at the contents of this bag. And here are all the contents, and I absolutely love this color combination. It's so beautiful. We have lots of gemstones, as you can see. We have two strands of green aventurine, and then we have these beautiful carnelian matte round beads. We have some crackle agate barrel beads right there, and some green aventurine pendants. And here we have a strand of hematite. It's in a rose gold color. And so all the metals, as you can see, we have some beautiful leaf charms, and then we have this large one right there. We have a whole bunch of glass leaf beads, some sparkly barrel beads right there. A whole bunch of spacer beads over here and some crystal bicones. And here we have a very nice strand of glass leaf beads. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety and lots to work with. And the colors are super gorgeous. So anyway, guys, that's a quick glance at the October collection. I think you definitely get a lot for your money. The other nice thing about Bargain Bee Box is that you get 30% off their sister site, Beadbox Bargains. They usually give you a coupon code with every month. So if you're interested in Bargain Bee Box, I'll leave a link to the website down below in the description section of this video along with a coupon code for $2 off your first order. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to their sister store as well. So now that we've taken a peek at this collection, let me show you the beads we're going to be using. Here are the beads we're going to be using for today's project. Let me go over the sizes with you. We have some crackle agate barrel beads. These measure 14 by 10 millimeters and they're actually frosted. Let me give you a close up. There it is. And there's the hole. I think these are lovely. And here we have some crystal faceted barrel beads. They're about the same size as these, 14 by 10 millimeters. And the color is green iris. These are very pretty as well. I love these. Look how sparkly it is. And here we have some carnelian matte round beads. They measure 10 millimeters in size. I love that they're matte and they're very translucent as well. And here we have some pressed glass leaf beads. They measure 12 by 10.5 millimeters and the color is green iris. Over here we have some hematite beads. They're synthetic hematite beads, and the color is rose gold, and they measure seven millimeters in length. We have some faceted crystal bicones. They're four millimeters in size, and the color is magma AB. And here we have some daisy spaces, and they measure five millimeters across, and they're in a rose gold color, as you can see. We're also gonna be using some other beads for the dangles that are gonna go on the pendant, but I'll pull those out later on. These are just gonna be for the strands, and it's actually just one strand that we're gonna to build today. Like I mentioned, the necklace will have the toggle clasp in the front. So we're going to build one long strand. And I'm thinking maybe 19 inches or maybe 20 inches, something like that. That's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. You may want something longer or shorter. And for this necklace, we're going to build five different kinds of beaded components. Some larger ones and some smaller ones. The smaller ones will just have one of these hematite beads. And the larger beaded components will consist of these beads here, plus the bicones and spacer beads. I'll be using some craft wire and this is 20 gauge and it's in an antique copper color as you can see. I've cut myself one long piece. I like to work with long pieces whenever I'm building beaded components. I do that so that I don't waste too much wire. But anyway, today we're going to do beaded components with simple loops. So I'm going to grab the wire with some flat nose pliers at about 3 eighths of an inch down or maybe half an inch down. It's up to you. And I'm going to kink it just like that. And now using round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the end 
You want to make sure that it's flush. You don't want it sticking out. And I'm simply going to loop it. You want to make sure your loop is centered and closed. So let me show you the first beta component. I'm going to load one of these spike cones and now a spacer bead and one of these barrel beads, another spacer bead and another bike cone. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to grab the wire with my flat nose pliers again, right where that bike cone is. You want to leave a little bit of space and you want to line up the bottom loop. And now I'm going to kink it. I'm going to snip off the excess, leaving 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch, depending on what you choose for your loops. I'm going to grab the end again with my round nose pliers, making sure it's flush. And I'm going to form a loop. Just like that. Now, one thing you do want to do is to make sure your loops are lined up. Mine look pretty lined up but I always do this anyway, just to make sure. Let me fix this one a little bit. So that's my first beta component. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these three. Each one's gonna have two bicones and two spacer beads, just like this one. So I'm not gonna show you that one again, since I've already shown you with this one, but I will show you this one right here. So here's my wire. Once again, I'm gonna kink my wire at 3 eighths of an inch down. Grab the end, make sure it's flush, form a loop. Make sure your loop is closed. I'm gonna load one of these beads. Grab the end, line up the bottom loop, kink it. Snip off the excess. Grab the end again, form a loop. And I know these loops aren't lined up because it was really difficult for me to hold that small bead. So I'm gonna line them up. And that's my second type of beaded component. And that's all there is to it, guys. Like I said, I'm gonna do the same thing with these three types using the bicones and spacer beads. And then I'll create a bunch of the hematite ones. So let me do that off camera and then I'll come back and we'll connect everything. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I created all the components I needed for my necklace. There's actually a total of 10 of the large ones and 11 of the small ones. And to figure that out, I had to arrange them on my board. And what I did is I tried to distribute the colors evenly, which is why I have three of these and three of these and then two of each of these two. Like I said earlier, my necklace is going to be between 19 and 20 inches long. So if you want something different, you may need to have a different number of beaded components than I do. That's something you have to decide. So let me go ahead and connect them and I'll explain why I have the colors and the types that you see right here. And since the necklace will have a toggle clasp in the front, I'm basically going to build just one long strand. So let me go ahead and start. I'm going to start with one of these. Let me open up this loop. And the first large one is going to be one of these barrel beads. I really like these. Let me slide it in just like that and close it. And now I'm going to open up this loop and connect one of these hematite ones and close it. Open up this loop and now I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to go to the leaf bead. Let me just close the loop and I'll explain. As you can see, the crackle bead is kind of orange in color or burnt orange, and the leaf bead is kind of green. So I'm gonna alternate between orange and green, and between those, I'm gonna have the hematite beads. So the next bead will be the hematite bead. Let me open up this loop now. The next one will be one of these carnelian beads because it's orange in color or reddish. And 
And now a hematite bead. And now one of these crystal beads because it's kind of the same color as the leaf bead. Green iris. So this is what we have. As you can see, I'm alternating the colors for the large beaded components. And in between each one, there's a hematite bead. So that's basically all I'm gonna do, guys. It's not really complicated. So anyway, I'm gonna repeat the same exact sequence, barrel bead, leaf bead, carnelian bead, and crystal bead. And I'm gonna keep connecting them in that order until I get 20 inches. Okay, as you can see, everything's connected. And as you can see, I started and ended with a hematite bead and I'm alternating the colors, orange, green, orange, green, orange, green, and so forth. The other thing I had to decide is the direction of the leaves. So on this side, the leaves are going up and then on the other side, they're going down, which is what I want. So the components will look like they're placed randomly when they're actually not. They're arranged in a sequence, but if you're one of these people that likes things symmetrically, you can certainly try to do that. It's up to you. But anyway, now we're gonna connect the toggle clasp. Here's my toggle clasp. It came in a bag. The ring portion measures 20 millimeters across and the bar portion measures 26 millimeters across. I'm not gonna use any jump rings. I'm just gonna hook them onto the loops of these components. And that's pretty simple. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open this one up. Connect the bar portion like that. And now let me close it. And now I'm going to open up this loop. And connect the ring portion. And close it. So this part's done. I think this is a very beautiful necklace, it really is. I love all the variety of beads. So now we're gonna move on to the pendant. Let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the pendant. Like I mentioned, it's gonna have a bunch of dangles. This is called a leaf cutout pendant and it's plated in rose gold. It's 53 millimeters long. It's pretty nice, I love this one. Look how beautiful it is. I think it's gorgeous. Now the bracelet that I made about a week ago had some green adventuring beads and that's what this one is. It measures eight millimeters across. And if you haven't seen that bracelet, let me show you. Here it is. It's really pretty. It has the same kind of beads as the necklace, but it has more of the green adventuring beads. Like I said, I'll link the tutorial down below. But anyways, you can see I have a bicone and a spacer bead as well. These three are gonna go on this pin. It's a flat head pin. I have two of these leaf charms. I think they're adorable. The bag came with 10 charms and these measure 18 by 10 millimeters. I have two five millimeter jump rings in a rose gold color. And here I have two pressed glass beads. They're a little bit smaller than the ones on the necklace. They measure 10 by eight millimeters. We received a total of 20 in the bag. And here I have a piece of chain. And believe it or not, guys, that's a piece of extended chain. I'm gonna hang the dangles off it, but I'm not gonna use all of these links. I'm probably only gonna use about three of them but I'll trim off the excess once I hang the dangles. So let's prepare the dangles first. For this one, I'm gonna use a green aventurine and a spacer bead. And a bicone. Like that. And since these pins are pretty strong, I'm just going to do simple loops. Just like I did with the beta components. I'm going to trim off the excess. Grab the end. 
and form a loop. Let me make sure it's closed. So this one's done. And I'm going to do the same thing with these two. I want to make sure the leaf is pointing downward. So I'm going to create the loop on this side. Let me kink it. Trim off the excess. And now I'm going to form a loop. And I can tell that these pins are pretty strong by the resistance. So that one's done. Let me do the next one. So the next step is to connect these dangles to the chain. I'm going to start with one of these leaf charms. Let me open up a jump ring. I'm going to slide the jump ring through that hole. Just like that. And now I'm going to slide the link of the extended chain onto the jump ring. Let me close it. And now on the other side of that same link, I'm going to hang one of these. So let me open up this loop. I'm going to hang it here. So the first link has the brass leaf charm and the pressed glass leaf charm. Let me close it. And now I'm going to hang another two on the next link down. So let me open up this jump ring. And I'm going to slide the brass leaf charm onto the jump ring. And let me pick up this. I'm going to hang it on this side of this link. and close it up. So that's what we have so far. And now let me open up the loop of this charm. And I'm going to hang it on the opposite side of the leaf charm, the brass leaf charm. I hope I'm not confusing you. Let me close it and then I'll show you. As you can see, this first link has the brass leaf charm on this side and the glass leaf charm on the other side. And then the next link has the opposite. The brass leaf charm is on this side and the glass one is on that side. And now the next link is just gonna have the green adventuring bead. So let me open up this loop. And I'm gonna hang it on this one. Let me see if I can do it without dropping it. And close it up. Now that I've done that, I can get rid of the excess. And these links are actually cut. So I'm just going to open them up instead of using my cutters. And that's all there is to it, guys. It's pretty easy. Here's my necklace.
I have another jump ring here. I think it measures about 5.5 millimeters. Let me open it up. Let me go ahead and connect the dangles first. I want to make sure I connect the first link, which is this one right here. And now I'm going to connect it to the pendant. And now I'm going to connect it to the ring portion of the toggle clasp, just like that. Let me close it. So there's my beautiful pendant. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I love all those colors. So anyway, guys, that's the finished necklace. I hope you like it. I think it's beautiful. I love the combination of the green iris and the carnelian colors. And of course, I love the rose gold. And by the way, for the wire, I picked copper because the copper picks up the color of the carnelian as well as those bicones. And to be frank, the other reason I did that is because I didn't have any rose gold wire. But if you have some, by all means, use it. I think I prefer the copper now that I'm looking at it. This is basically a mixed metal design and it definitely matches this bracelet. So anyway, I'd like to go ahead and put the necklace on for you. Let me do that and I'll see you in a few moments.